This is the Council Tool Pickaroon. This is a pound and a half head on a 36 inch handle. Um, man, when's the last time you swung a pound and a half head on a 36 inch handle? This uh, this is, is really incredible. Um, very fun to use. Uh, it has just a wonderful balance to it. Um, as with uh, everything by Council Tool, the, hand, the handle is just wonderful. Uh, it's made by um, Lake Waccamaw Handle Works, Lake Waccamaw Woodworks. I forget the exact name of the company that makes the handles for council tool it is a separate company but as i recall it is uh, it's still owned and run by uh, a member or a relative of the council family so i i think that's pretty neat um they do such a good job here with their handles uh this is just so comfortable to use this is a full-sized axe handle um now, um, this is this is a working tool. I mean, it really is. This is probably going to see some abuse. Um, you know, maybe I maybe I don't necessarily take care of this. I'm kind of trying to predict how I'll use it the way that I would take care of uh, of, of an axe. Uh, and so I want to do some things to prepare it for a life of heavy duty use. Um, now, this is brand new, and so it does have that light wax coating. From the factory that gets put on it uh it is not now what do i have in here oh <laughs> you know what this is this is uh two-stroke gasoline <laughs> in, in my mineral spirits bottle you know same difference it's gonna do the same thing you just need a solvent to um to take off that uh that wax uh, Mineral Spirits does a great job. Um, I mean, this is this is gasoline, so that should do just the same thing. And with a little bit of uh, two-stroke oil in there, um, that should help uh, even get a little bit of oil and protection in the handle. Um, you know, it's an old-timer's secret to put a handle in crankcase oil. You know, they say crankcase oil. That must have been how they referred to it, you know, 100 years ago or so. Now you just say take some, you know, used motor oil and spread it on your on your handle. Um, and boy, does it ever waterproof it. I mean, wow. Um, it really does. I have some handles that you could leave outside for a month in the rain. And they wouldn't take on a bit of moisture. Uh, so we're going to get, we're going to get all that uh, wax off here. Make sure to get the eye too. I don't know if they coat the eye actually. Um, maybe somebody who knows can uh, can clue me in to whether the top of the eye is coated at the factory with wax. I don't think it is. All right, so uh, let's get the gasoline out of here for that next part. <laughs> So this is uh, something I like to do with all of my uh, hard use tools. There we go. All right. Uh, now that we've got that lightly charred, I'm going to take some 220 grit sandpaper. Um, 
you know, in addition to uh, adding some moisture protection, um, trying a handle like this makes it so, so comfortable to use. I mean, it really, really does. It just is excellent. Uh, leaves it just glassy smooth. Plus, I, I, I do prefer the look. Uh, the hardest, hardest thing is getting these spots up here. You know, I, I really, I don't want to leave a hard edge. Some people say that this hurts the wood. Um, I, I don't subscribe to that at all. Um, people have been charring wood for thousands of years to improve its durability and its functionality, especially tool handles, especially tool handles. I mean, the, the earliest tool handles that we have are all fire hardened. Um, you know, people have been doing this for a long time. You know, if you burn the handle, I mean, I suppose, I suppose that could cause a problem, but that's not what we're doing here. All right. And again, because this is going to get used pretty harshly, um, I've got some pine tar here. And this is something that I have been doing for a long time. That's about as much pine tar as we need. This stuff is sticky as all get out. Just want to get it into all the spots where I where I want it to be coated. Um, now, if you leave it like this, you're playing baseball, <laughs> and we're you know we're not playing baseball. We don't we don't need to swing you know three or four times. We need to swing you know a couple hundred. And so from here, I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, of oil. And that's going to cut that pine tar and get a really, really nice finish. I don't want any buildup of pine tar because that'll stick. You know, that's why people use pine tar in baseball because you get a good grip. And that's why pitchers can't use pine tar. Put a little, little dab of that on your neck and now you're throwing a hundred mile fastball, a uh, hundred mile per hour fastball. Get the top here, get it all the way around. Could even use a little bit more oil here. Um, now this oil is, uh, is pine tar. It is uh, linseed oil. Um, I have some oak bark tannins in here and uh, and I think some boric acid. I also have some boric acid in there. So this, I mean, this is really how you get a vintage handle right here, is uh, you coat your handle like a vintage ax user would have coated their handle. All right, now I'll take my rag here, wipe it all down. That's just gonna get that extra pine tar off of there. I might actually take just a little bit more here. I tried to use the other side of that rag, the side that didn't have the solvent on it.
Before I sign off here, just wanted to let you know that uh, that this Picaroon did come from Whiskey River. Um, I've ordered a bunch of stuff from Whiskey River. Wonderful company, um, very responsive, good customer service, good selection. They are a council tool distributor. Um, they they distribute uh, a lot of other things too. Um, check them out. Uh, every time I order from them, I pick up five or six wedges. Their wedges are a buck. It's a fantastic deal. Um, I buy the full size double bit wedges. Uh, that way I always have some. Um, now, I, uh, I did want to mention Whiskey River doesn't just sell new tools. Uh, they, they sell a lot of vintage axes too. They, uh, they have some auctions going on. I picked up this masting axe. Uh, this is a huge masting axe. I picked it up a couple weeks ago during their, I believe it was their European auction. Um, and, and it was sold as a, as a no name unmarked ax, but I am pretty sure that this is a Douglas ax company ax. I can see D O U G, um, Douglas ax company. Uh, they operated from the maybe early to late 1800s. I think they went out of a business just before 1900, but I'm pretty sure this is Douglas. And then there would be ax manufacturing over here. Sometimes they have a William Hunt on the on the pole, but this is uh, this is consistent with, I would say a late 1800s masting ax. I'm pretty sure it is drop forged based on the eye. I'm pretty sure it's an all steel ax too, uh, which would also be consistent with something made in the late 1800s. Um, this is a heck of a hewing ax. Um, I, I just love it. Um, by 1800s, believe it or not, this would be almost an outdated axe pattern. Um, you know, it was masting axes were tied to wooden ships. And uh, by the late 1800s, really nobody was making wooden ships anymore. So I'm really interested in the history of those masting axes. I wanna do a video specifically on those, just masting axes. Um, but, uh, so just wanted to point out that this did come from Whiskey River. Check them out, again, not sponsored. Um, none of that. Um, I, I haven't even really talked with the guys over there, but um, every interaction that I've had with the company has been wonderful. So check them out if you're interested in one of these picaroons.